Now, we know that this pandemic has already changed the way that we're living and the way we're working and likely how we'll manage and invest our money. Now, we can't actually see the future and we can't know what life is going to do in terms of change. But going forward, it will help to get some clarity around it. We are so pleased that you're going to meet an all-star panel of guest experts today. Joining us today are Michelle Singletary, who writes the award-winning column, The Color of Money, for The Washington Post, and is the author of three books, including her most recent, The 21-Day Financial Fast. Maddie Dykewald, the co-founder of AgeWave, and author of several books, including her latest, Influence How Women's Soaring Economic Power Will Transform Our World for the Better. And I should mention, she's working on a new book called Ageless Aging. Take charge of your future. And lastly, but not least, Dominic Endicott, a venture capitalist and partner in Four Gen Ventures, mm -hmm. a new age tech fund. Um, Michelle, let's start with you. We're living in the most extraordinary times. Millions of people are unemployed. Many have come to realize that their emergency funds are inadequate and others are raiding their retirement accounts. So um, what advice do you have for those trying to get a handle on their money today and what steps they can take to rebuild after this financial crisis is over? So when I talk to people, I sort of put them in different categories. But the first thing I say is that when, because so many people are unemployed or they have a disruption in their income, that you have to basically triage your financial life right now. So if you've ever been to a hospital where there's been uh, lots of people coming in and not, not staff, you might come in with a, you know, a twisted ankle. And then, you know, shortly after someone comes in and they take them before you and you're thinking, well, wait a minute, I've been here. Um, but when they triage patients, they take the most critical patients first. Um, so a heart attack trumps your you know, sprained ankle. And the same thing with your finances. Mm -hmm. So if you've lost your job, then you only pay what you absolutely have to pay. The roof over your head, food on the table. And that may mean that your credit card bills don't get paid. I'm not saying that you shouldn't call your lender to try to get a break, but you can only do but so much. And you should be OK with that given the circumstances. Your advice is crystal clear that it's all about just surviving. Survive. Don't pay anything that you don't right. have to pay. Now, um, I want to ask a couple of the other panelists what, what they think. Maddie, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that this is a really important conversation, and it's part of a bigger conversation. Uh, in a study we did last year, we found that talking about money, that women were more likely and more comfortable talking about their own death than talking about money. So in this time, when we're home with family and we're trying to really bond with each other, it's a great time to open up the conversation about money, including debt, including credit, credit scores, uh, and also figure out how can we learn more about finances? I would add two additional angles. One angle is around work because Obviously, managing your cost side is, is one way to sort of deal with today's crisis. The other way is to find new sources of revenue. And we're, we're really at the beginning of this massive wave where suddenly work has become remote. And that means a lot more people can find potentially other sources of income. So I think sort of thinking about new sources of income and how do you uh, align for those jobs and what are they looking for is a new skill, but that's another area of opportunity. And I think the other piece is around restructuring your core assets. Uh, you know, many people are potentially in, in an opportunity to actually take a look at where they're living and, and see if they can live in a place that's cheaper. And that's probably something that wasn't an option a year ago. In our program here, we're encouraging viewers to uh, submit questions to pose to our experts. And my email inbox is usually filled with all kinds of questions from readers. I'm sure like they are with you, Michelle. And I want to read one to you and have you respond to it. I think it's sort of atypical of these times. So I'll read it. It's, I retired one year ago with $1 million in a 2020 target date fund. I had no plans to draw on it for quite some time, if ever. This is a very scary world to me right now, though, and I want to pull it out and just move it to all cash. Bad idea. I don't want to lose all I have. I've worked hard for all my life for this, and any advice would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, that's a good question. I've been hearing that from a lot of people. People are so scared, and they're thinking, you know, my mattress is looking pretty safe right now. Um, but like I like to joke, if you're going to do that, give me your address. I got some people. Um, <laughs> you, know, you can't be in a panic. And, and here's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say don't be scared. I'm not even going to say don't panic. But don't 
uh, make moves based on that fear. The fact is, once you retire, you are likely to still live in retirement for another 20 to 30 years. And your mm-hmm. money is going to need to grow to at least keep pace with inflation. If you move it to cash, that won't happen. Because right now, the banks are paying with the Fed rate uh, is so low, practically zero. You're not going to get any growth on that money in the bank. And so the things that you need to buy in the future, food, housing, clothes, things like that, If your money doesn't keep pace with inflation, you will be behind. So hopefully um, with uh, this person is going to sit down with someone to to map out, okay, once the market stabilizes, because you don't want to necessarily move things now anyway, because you're going to lock in any losses that your portfolio might have had right now. Um, So you're going to work through a plan to say, okay, I need this amount of money for the next, I would say probably two years while we kind of stabilize. So that would mean a combination of any fixed income, social security, pension, savings. And then if you feel like you may have to pull from that portfolio, and then the rest of it is invested for the long term. Um, You might have some for five to 10 years and then, then longer. But cash is not the place to go completely for the simple fact that you, it won't keep pace with inflation. So I want to take a moment to talk about the lighter side of your life and your money. Uh, Pam and I, we always want to find out what people are really doing right now. So we've been scouring the internet, searching for some of the imaginative ways in which people are saving money or maximizing their dollars during this difficult time. And here's one we found on Circular Threads. It's a picture of a handbag that this woman made from plastic grocery bags. That's right, during the pandemic. Remember, you couldn't bring your own bags in. So this woman found a super creative way to recycle her bags and uh, notice the practical carrying case. This one handbag, by the way, used 500 plastic bags and it took her, Bob, nine hours to put that together. Yeah, so that's not necessarily how I want to spend nine hours of my life, but I do have like 500 (laughs) single-use bags in my pantry. And because I can't bring them to any recycling centers right now, maybe I will donate them to her. You know what makes me proud to call myself a bag lady? (laughs) 